Hi there, welcome to my Buckyballs motor tutorial. On the table here is everything you need to complete the task in making a Buckyballs motor. I'll take you through step by step on how to create a quite a difficult a little motor to make. Uh, the trickiest part is the coil and I'll take you through that uh, later but first of all I'll take you through how to make the main uh, pillars of the buckyball engine which are these here. Now I'll take this apart and show you how to put it together. Now what I do is I count four, 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 and then four, making sixteen. And you put that in a loop, and then you bring this around the other way so that it lays on top of one another. And you go round, and you do that six times. Always making sure they're laying on top of one another. Now you grab one end and you pinch in the middle till it comes in the middle like that. You go to the other side, you do the same again, and you push through till it's um, together all the way through the middle. And you grab that end and you squeeze like that and you do the same all the way to the end and hey plus so you have yourself of a conveniently square pillar. And you do that twice so you can get it on both sides of the battery. And these bucky balls they make for perfect contact and for passing electricity through the uh, coating of the uh, magnetic spheres. Now that was the easy part. Now you've probably all seen one of these before. It's uh, one of those levitating uh, pens. Now I've got pretty bored of it, it's served its purpose. It's quite interesting to look at, you can see it's uh, floating there. But inside of this pen is what I'm after. And I'll just grab that. Take this uh, writing end off. And inside of there, you find a lovely little powerful magnet. And that is what I've been using recently with my latest designs of my uh, buckyball motors. Because it uh, offers a lot more um, force, uh, magnetic force, than the actual buckyballs themselves. Now this uh, pen's cost uh, it's a few quid. I'm sure you can pick them up on eBay, quite cheap, or on Amazon. And uh, you can put it back together again afterwards and it's fine. and you place that in the middle. Now the hard part is making the coil. And with this, we'll make it with, this is enameled copper wire. It's uh, reasonably thin, but it's uh, quite bendy, and if you go for a thicker one, it's still uh, quite easy to make a coil with. But uh, I prefer this thinner stuff. Okay, we'll unwind that a few turns. Now, how I make the coil is I leave one straight end. I've got the battery, and I wrap that round about twelve times. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. 12. Push them together, slide the battery out, now you have a coil. This is the beginning stage of the coil. We're going to tie it up to make sure it all stays nice and tight. We're going to use these scissors to uh, cut this end off.
Now, <coughs> the important thing with the coil is to get it all squeezed up like that. So just generally squeeze it together with your fingers. And with one of the ends, bring it through like that and then pull it quite hard. You'll see there what I've done. So I've just wrapped it round, pulled it out, pull it out quite hard, and I do it again, just to make sure it holds in place. Really pull on it. And try to keep the wire pretty straight if you can. Now, you'll notice that it's quite far to the left there on the actual coil. So I get my nail and I bend it in a bit so that it's more in the middle of the coil. If you see what I mean. Now, with this other wire, bring it under like so and bring it to the other side it's all going to look a bit rough at the moment and it's not going to look very balanced or anything but we can sort that out later so you take it to the other side and curl it in and do the same as the other side wrap the wire around it and pull it real tight Wrap it around your finger if you have to, just to really fill in it. So that it ties off on the other end. And do the same again. And don't forget, you don't really want it on the left hand side there. You want it more in the middle of the coil. You get your nail and bend it in, that will help with the balance and try and straighten out the wires. As you can see that's pretty wonky, you want it to be more like that. And check around the other way, that seems straight enough. You'll, once you put the coil onto the actual buckyballs you'll soon realise if it's wobbling around and you'll be able to adjust it accordingly. Now that's pretty much it. Now we go to scraping the coating off of the wire. Now this is pretty important that you scrape the coating off because otherwise you will not make any contact with the buckyballs and no current will pass through it. So we really do need to get this coating off from the ends offwards. But let's cut it to sides first. Now with this uh, that I made earlier Place it on top, get a good idea of where you need to cut it. But you definitely don't want to cut them too short because otherwise, it will not make enough contact with the buckyballs. Get a little bit off that side. And about that much off that side. That's just about right. About a, a hand's width. Now I'll bring my camera down close to the motor. When I wob you can see it's pretty wobbly once you try and start it off. And you really want to get that wobble down to a minimum, a real minimum. That's not too bad. That goes around a few times on its own. So I don't think that'll be too bad.
Now, with the razor that you saw earlier, this is what I use to scrape the enamel off. You can use this, or a dull blade of some sort, like from the kitchen, or even the edge of your scissors will probably do it. But I find it's much easier with a razor. You just simply put the edge of the table and scrape away. And you definitely want to do this quite thoroughly, because anything left on the, uh, the wire will prevent contact with the buckyballs and will potentially stop it from working. Bit much like that. Right, now that I've got all of the coating off the ends of the wires here, it's pretty much ready to go. I'm sure you would have probably found out by now that it takes a lot of adjusting and wiggling about and making sure everything's nice and straight and balanced. I can even see there there's still a little bit of a wobble, but sometimes I think it wobbling around helps uh, with the contact. Now, you don't lay the coil on top like that. You put it in one uh, layer down. So that way you can bounce around inside that little space it's got there and uh, make good contact. It takes a few attempts to get it going but it soon starts. There you have it.